Hello everyone, my name is Erica Fisher. I'm an assistant professor at Oregon State University and I'm here to talk to you about the structural fire engineering teaching modules developed for the AISC educational resources. Just a little bit of background on these teaching modules. Structural fire engineering is the design of structural components and frames to maintain load carrying capacity throughout a design basis fire. The purpose of this is to design our structural components to deform such that compartmentalization is not lost. Compartmentalization is what's going to keep the fire from spreading horizontally across the floor plate or vertically throughout the building. However, this concept is not taught in typical undergraduate civil engineering curriculum, not even with the prescriptive approach. So this is really the motivation behind developing a lot of these modules. Each of these teaching modules has three different parts to it, or four different parts, depending on how you look at it. Um, the first part is supplementary material. Just as this isn't taught in any civil engineering undergraduate curriculum, or very few of them today, um, a lot of you actually didn't receive this education either. So we thought it was important to provide supplementary material that provides background for uh, the instructors to use so that they feel confident using the teaching modules. This includes um, references, um, a lot of in-depth background information on the topics, uh, discussion questions and answers to those discussion questions, um, as well as in-class exercises and answers to those exercises. In addition to that, we do provide you with the PowerPoint slides that are annotated. So you don't have to develop your, your material, your teaching material from scratch. Um, rather, you can use the PowerPoint slides and the information we provide you um, to, to uh, teach this material in the classroom. And then lastly, there are there is a homework problem and the a, a solution to the homework problem associated with each of these learning modules so that students can practice on their own um, and get feedback on their um, their their knowledge and how much they've their the, how they're doing within the class. All of this is really designed around the concept of the spacing effect. Um, so rather than make a whole new class on structural fire engineering, where we provide all this information at once to our students, um, we're, we're integrating it into the already existing undergraduate civil engineering curriculum. So they get the information throughout their entire undergraduate career. Um, and what the science has shown around learning is that the students will actually learn better when they get a little bit of the information over a longer period of time rather than inundated with kind of a flood of information at once. Um, this will also allow them to see the context of what they're learning. So as they're learning about material properties for um, in their strength of materials class, they're actually learning about how those material properties change at elevated temperatures. So you can kind of link the two concepts together mentally. So a little bit of background on this concept of structural fire engineering, and that I'm kind of including the prescriptive design within this. A lot of surveys that have been deployed throughout Europe have shown that, um, you know, that, that uh, members of the design team actually are not able to have this level of knowledge necessary to implement structural fire engineering on jobs, um, particularly since architects are often ta tasked with being responsible for this, even though the structural engineers are the ones doing the work. So when a, a lot of architects are asked to define these terms that I'm showing at the top, um, they're really not able to do so. Um, yet, when we survey um, architects in the EU, um, what's found is that um, while 86% of the architects felt responsible for the fire safety, 65% of the structural engineers are serving as fire protection experts on 65% of the projects. So. The structural engineers are serving as these fire experts. The architects are being responsible for the fire safety, but neither are actually being educated in this topic. So this is a massive issue. Um, and so we felt it was necessary to include this in the undergraduate education and curriculum so that they, the structural engineers have the language to talk, they have the knowledge to be able to implement this on jobs, and they have the knowledge to be able to act as that expert on projects. 
So let's talk about the teaching modules. So the first teaching module is a mechanics strength of materials teaching module. And this goes over steel material properties at elevated temperatures. Students are already being tasked with testing tension coupons in their mechanics or strength of materials class and developing stress strain curves calculating the Young's modulus, calculating the yield stress, looking at the shape of the curve. Um, so why not do it at elevated temperatures? So this teaching module actually asks students to take data from um, a tension coupon tests at elevated temperatures, plot it, and calculate all of the material properties. Compare it to those that are published in the AISC Appendix 4. Um, and comment and kind of understand and, and, and um, look at how, these sh how the shape of these curves are gonna change with elevated temperatures and come up with all of the concepts of, you know, what is happening to steel as it's being heated. The second teaching module has two parts, depending on how much the instructor wants to engage in this. And it's really calculating the compression capacity of a column at elevated temperatures. Students can do this um, at a set temperature, or they can actually do it um, throughout an entire fire, so as the temperatures are changing. So the students need to have an understanding of the strength of materials. I have, they have to have an understanding of the material properties at elevated temperatures. And then they're going to they're gonna go and they're going to use those material properties. So we're building upon um, what they're actually uh, learning previously. Usually students are taking strength of materials or mechanics of materials in their second year. At Oregon State, usually students are taking steel design in their fourth year. Sometimes that's occurring in the third year at other institutions. So the last, uh, the, the fourth steel design um, teaching module is looking at system level behavior. So um, building upon what the students are learning in calculating the uh, compression capacity of the column and then looking at it throughout an entire system. How does, how do forces in the columns and the beams change when the design fire changes? Um, looking at the impact of those design fires on the force demands in the members. And then the last teaching module is again this fire protection design, going over the prescriptive fire protection design, but also going over what are the different types of fire protection and how do they actually work. Um, so this is also really important for students to understand. All right, so um, these are the four teaching modules that include all three of these um, materials here. So we recommend that, that teachers look at the supplementary material, educate themselves, see what they're comfortable teaching, um, adapt the lecture PowerPoints to their style of teaching, to what they would like to include, and then there's a homework assignment and answer key. The fire protection design includes just a lecture PowerPoint, doesn't include all the other material. I did want to acknowledge some people who were really instrumental in helping develop these teaching modules. Um, Nicole Nickerson is a graduate research assistant at Oregon State University, and then there were members of the ASC Fire Protection Committee that were really helpful in developing these. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and I hope that you all use um, these teaching modules in this coming school year. Thank you.